Most good stories are told over a cup of tea. This is one of those stories. I do it because, you know, there's a need to, to feel that I've contributed to life. I think in some sense, everybody wants to go through life and leave it a better place than when they came in. It would have changed my life. Um, even though I've been studying most of my life and um, I hadn't uh, perhaps experienced this form of study which is very experiential. <laughs> and I find myself on the front of papers and talking at all sorts of organisation meetings and a couple of years ago if you told me that I was going to be doing this I would have just said no way because I was one of those people who would go to meetings maybe. I hated committees and there's no way no one I would have spoken at anything. This story starts in a small community. It may be your community. It may be mine. This community may be small. It could be the local CFA or church group. It could be an entire township. Community isn't defined by boundaries or lines on a map. It's much more personal than that. This is about community stories. Brethren traditionally have been a big timber town. There was only one small mill left at that stage, and which is now gone. So it, it has changed a lot in that time. And um, as I guess when we did the study circle, it really was a, a changing time when people, was, you know, Brewton was developing a new identity, um, mm. and it had a bad reputation, which wasn't fair. You know, there was nothing to ground that reputation on. Um, going. Well, it probably went back to the when it was a timber town 30 years ago. It's, it's quite a strong community now. Um, we've got a number of experienced leaders in the town um, and I think there's a real sense of pride in the town. It's, um, it's maturing further and then the population is changing. There's more professional people living there now to what there were. Castellas is a very small um, community between Swift Creek and Omeo, but it's actually a very historic um, gold mining area. Um, there were large, exceptionally large gold mines, uh, which were very profitable in the 1800s and into the start of the 1900s. But a lot of the, um, the mines have, have um, gone into disrepair. A lot of the, the, um, the water races have, have gone into disrepair. Somebody told me that the water race uh, that runs um, which is called the Jernkey Race, is actually 70 kilometres long. Each community is at a different stage um, of development um, and they don't all go forward in a logical way. Um, like my community of Merby North probably has a long history of cooperation and innovation. Um, and in the mid-1990s when you know the shires were amalgamated and the banks closed and a newspaper closed, that community was very innovative and set up cooperative um, ventures, a co-op to support the bank and a cooperative newspaper um, and that was inspiring to lots of other communities. We were sort of headlong down a, a, a path of um, wanting to just go to the community and say you know this is us, we're happening. They said well you've actually got to make sure that you're, you're you know you're, you've asked everybody that everything it, what that you're doing is actually what's wanted and so we decided on their advice which was given to us in a very sensitive way it wasn't you we weren't told what to do we were just given the advice uh, that we should scan the the community first before we went ahead any further the center for rural communities in conjunction with monash university and tafe have developed a graduate certificate in regional community development. So what makes up community development? Community development has two main goals and that's what this work is framed within, these strategies of learning are framed within there to work, work towards, you know, an academic term, social justice. So um, that's about you know, being able to care for the people we live with, wherever they're from. and environmental um, sustainability, so care for the places that we live in. So they're both long-term goals and in Western society we haven't done very well at either. 
Well, community development can be all things to all people too, and, but people are looking for specific uh, services and outcomes at times and we need to complement existing council services and see how they can be more effective in the community. But also really talk with communities is a really important part of our role and helping the community do things for themselves is probably the real focus in, in community development. We have a citizens association in Bruthen and the people that have been involved there have dealt really well with local government um, and they've worked with local government rather than being an us and them attitude which a lot of communities have. It was a realisation that, 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 that sometimes the community wasn't fully in control of this process um, that, that made me think a bit more about what was actually happening with, with, uh, within the committees and what we were doing and how effective we were in getting our message across and how much we were being listened to. Many years ago I'd, I'd been working in another job where um, as a group we'd been lobbying government quite heavily on a particular issue and then there was an election and a change of government and all those people that were convinced of things were no longer in power and so all the work really became undone. And at that point I started thinking that really we need to get ourselves organised and to engage with communities and create a, a movement or a voice that way rather than try and always directly first convince government. So I guess the centre has been spending a lot of its time so far in actually building that credibility and knowledge with local communities. The idea of the centre has always been to encourage people to participate in their communities, to develop skills within their communities and and that will benefit their communities, recognising that it's local people that will find local solutions to local issues and local problems. The centre was set up in 1995 um, and that was a time of great change in rural Victoria. There was a huge stress in rural communities that what local people saw as a way of life that supported everybody in the city had no way to participate at all. But obviously universities have access to a lot of resources and knowledge and skills that communities could use and it, it, I'd like to see a real partnership built up. I'd like to see the communities driving the questions if you like and the university working with them to find, do research or find answers or trial things. Well we had good support from people at Monash University from the TAFE sector and from the Gippsland Community Adult Education and two of those Monash and Gippsland Community Adult Ed put in 10,000 each to research where there was a need for the centre across Gippsland and um, Neil Smith and Jennifer Pearce did that research and people were overwhelmingly in support of it. They really felt that they didn't understand what government was doing, they needed a translator if you like, they just felt completely disillusioned that anybody was going to care about what was happening. Um, so that research I guess affirmed the need for the centre and we were really aware that there were skills and resources within educational institutions which supported communities starting those ventures themselves. The centre is sort of looking to foster that idea and provide opportunities for people to do that and through TAFE what we hope to do is I guess recognise the skills and the knowledge that people gain through participating in the study circles and um, within their groups. The course certainly imparts a lot um, more confidence in yourself. You learn a lot more assertiveness. I uh, learnt a lot more about my rights in the community and um, about perhaps being more active with my decisions, not to just sit on the side and be silent, to speak up if I thought it was necessary. So. In my own life, I guess it just gave me a lot more confidence to interact with people on different levels that once you might have thought um, were perhaps a bit above and perhaps, you know, like councillors, mayors sort of things. And now you just feel that you've got a right to share your view um, with anyone um, just because you exist in that community and it does affect you. I've actually been a community worker for about 20 years. And um, a lot of the work that I do is, is I guess, a combination of you know, intuitive understanding of communities and and the things that I've learned in workshops, you know, over that period of time and the people that I've worked with, which have been really good. I guess the good thing about this and the reason why I'm doing it is because um, it actually gives me a, a lot more of a theoretical um, base for what I do. 
so that when I actually do something, I feel that I've act there is a, a substantiative reason for me doing it. Whereas before, I used to think that it, it, was, a, it was something that I was doing because I thought it was right. Uh, I came into the course thinking that uh, further education in university would mean a lot of academia and uh, was preparing myself for that. Once the course happened, I actually thought it really isn't how I perceived it to be. Uh, the course so, um, utilises the students and their experiences more so than out of a textbook. No, I, I, just, I was just curious. It was just something that I, I did for my own personal interest. And it was a really interesting group of people. So it really introduced you to other viewpoints that you wouldn't not normally come across in your, your life. I think people tend to mix with the same sort of people in their work environment and with their friends. And this just introduced you to a whole different way of looking at things and listening to what other people's views were. I guess I'm, I'm uh, learning a, a whole range of uh, new skills. I'm a scientist and a very ra a rational based person, so it's finding it quite a challenge to actually do this uh, sort of fuzzy, touchy-feely, art, arts-type subject, you might say in one sense, but to, to be more involved with people-type skills. That was a real challenge for me in starting the course because I was, aside from another person who worked for local government, I was probably really the only really governmenty person there, and especially being from Melbourne as well, you know, that was sort of an additional barrier. Um, it, Sometimes you create your own barriers for yourself though, you really think that perhaps you're, you're quite different from these other people or something like that. But I found that really the opportunities to sort of share stories and the opportunities for people to get to know each other, it really didn't end up being much of a barrier at all. We use a form of teaching called strategic questioning and that invites people to share their experiences. So they're providing the content of what's interesting. We're not we're not offering that because this kit is used across such diverse communities, coastal communities, inland communities, um, urban communities, if you like, in terms of Latrobe Valley, industrial communities. Um, we use the same questions. The mixed mediums of learning with the videos, the field trips, the guest speakers, the group exercises. We went to galleries, we went to cafes. We, um, you know, it's great sitting around with a cup of coffee at a gallery thinking we're doing uni we're learning and, and you are and just seeing how communities function. During the content of the course it's really important to reinforce that knowledge in communities important to listen to, that it's not just what's already written in books from other countries. So part of the course is is attending and listening to innovative ventures from within communities and getting students to engage with that knowledge is often the most memorable for them. It's what, what they refer to and what they instantly make connection with because knowledge from one community to another is a trusted source, you know, whereas if you say I'm from the government and I'm here to help you, that's a joke. Mm. Well, the process is really yes, very much about helping people do more things for themselves. Um, we don't, as I said before, we don't have all the resources, we don't have all the solutions, we don't, these communities have, have the solutions to their own issues. They understand the, their community better than anyone else and they understand the people within it um, better than anyone else and they understand the needs. So we, our role is to really support communities to do a lot more for themselves. And it is empowering them, uh, but it's also enabling them to feel a sense of control, a sense of identity, give them a greater sense of identity, a greater sense of pride and, and um, and that develops skills in people. It develops a whole range. People get involved in their community, develops a whole range of, of skills. It has given me really good insight to how uh, across, across the board there are a lot of community people that influence the way uh, broader areas run. For example, land catchment, um, uh, people within land care, people within uh, the, the health services. There seems to be a, a attribute of community in all of those areas where that's bringing home the uh, more human side of it. Particularly, we spent the first um, semester doing um, a section on adult learning, which I just apply those principles all the time. 
Um, in fact, I was helping somebody out today who's um, developing up a workshop for a conference in Japan, and we were able to go back to those principles of adult learning and say, well, you know, this is actually what the participants need. This is the type of activity that we should run. So those sorts of things were really great. And I think, I mean, apart from the fact that it helps um, to helps people to communicate and to get the information out. I think also it set an example in the community and um, it showed other groups that it was important to communicate what they were doing and it encouraged them to do that. I got some really rich information from them about, you know, it's, it's simple things like um, I'm paid two days a week as a community development worker, I'm paid one day a week with something else, so I sit three days a week in a, in a little neighbourhood house in Buchan and I do very little personal development, I have very little contact, direct contact, like there's networks but very little direct contact with other people working in my field. And then the, the learning side of it, I mean, um, I had a good talk on the way up today with one of the participants and they're just saying, just a real change in thinking about how to approach things and um, even things like one of the one of the comments was about not um, it's really hard work being the, the expert all the time and that actually that's just not you just don't have to operate that way and you can really actually um, develop some leadership skills that engender leadership in other people but it's a real there's a real skill in that and, and learning some of those really fundamental kind of facilitator key community development during the course too. <laughs> I'm sure I could benefit from it. Oh, I can really see what what learning I have been taking in and how it's been affecting me and changing the way that I work within my community. Um, I certainly know that there's a whole lot of value there. As a region we can be really learning from each other and helping each other out and you know that's just one example is that you know because Malakut has been having a festival very similar years. to what Eva's about to organise for the last 25 years. And so it's great to see it being moved and, you know, it happening in other areas. So. One of the things that we're doing is actually paying them to carry out that work because a lot of the, the people that are doing this work are only paid one day a week and they would be doing it on paid time, which in a lot of cases is a real barrier to, to people undertaking this, this skill development. And then we're providing a $2,000 just brokerage one-off payment towards these community projects. So what we're hoping is that there's going to be some really unique um, and innovative ideas that are local solutions to local problems. With so many great stories being told, surely there have to be direct outcomes from all this community development. One of the big problems in the area was that young people didn't have any opportunities to actually gain part-time employment, which is the sort of thing that happens in cities and large regional towns where um, you, you can go and work in the supermarket stacking shelves or go to McDonald's and get, you know, and earn money that way out of school. And that kind of supports young people's lifestyle. And uh, because in our area, you know, after the floods and we've had droughts and it's a very sort of low socioeconomic area anyway, that we thought that a lot of our young people were being disadvantaged. So with some money from um, Uniting Care, we developed this project which actually finds part-time out of school our jobs for our secondary school students and we actually use the all of the funding that we have as a 50 percent subsidy for employers it was interesting really we had an almost anonymous email just from somebody whom i won't identify but who just said they, uh, Duke Energy are coming through the gorge in now now and they're going to blast it. We didn't want them to uh, blast through the gorge where they were intending to blast through but it was um, it remained a unique piece of now now. We got involved with the environmental defenders of, of office environmental defense or something which is a group of lawyers who get together for and um, apply themselves to environmental things for for nothing. Uh, Duke Energy flew there their big wigs down. And I actually thought they were there to say, us, say to us, you know, we're going through and behold, they fell back and, and said, you know, the option they would take was to, to put it through where all the other facilities had gone through and, and not thing. And that was a, <laughs> that was a staggering fight. I mean, there was a small community of, you know, there are 217 people odd in now now, but that size group of com group could, a small group of people could actually front up to a big multinational company and win a case. 
So it was big. That was yeah. our David and Goliath stuff. That was very heady and was the beginning of feeling of amalgamating us very powerfully together. The other awards are an event that we dreamed up, I guess, um, about three years ago, uh, with a view to, to finding a way of bringing communities together to share what they're doing and learn from each other. And we found that often communities didn't want to do that, so we thought if we did it in a way that was a bit of fun, and I think has a, a real rural sense of humour in it, then that would be a, a good process for getting communities to come together. Cheers, had some cheese, pretty cheers, well, I'll stop us. Cheers, fourteen, one, two, three, this one is shiny, gooey, she. The other awards are awards given to actual community groups, not individuals within that group. They've been recognised and nominated for the efforts they put into the community and uh, they will be offered a prize of a hand-painted teapot that has been painted by, again, local members of the community. We tirelessly produce the newsletter. It serves the whole community and outlying district. It has been in existence since 1975. For almost 30 years, the newsletter has been bringing the news, what's on, and local advertising to the community. The choir came really about uh, from a Bucks night. A few of us guys were friends sitting around campfire and really sort of came up with the idea, you know, we should get together more often, have an excuse to have a drink. And we came up with the idea of, uh, you know, forming a choir. I think there was initially four of us who met in the Now Now pub, and that was the impetus. We, I think we put an ad in the paper uh, to get people to come along, and we got uh, zero response to that. So we just called up mates and said, and dragged them along. And eventually, I think then now there's, you know, sort of regularly about 13, 14 of us. group of people who really didn't know each other uh, get together once a week really to have a chat a drink and a bit of a sing-along and it's what I actually want in a greater way from the community here in now now uh, uh, would like to have where we get together regularly for whatever reason uh, and we have several projects at hand at the moment where we're working towards that um, to get together socialize talk, understand each other. With so many things going on in our communities, how do we measure these outcomes? We introduce them to a whole range of evaluation tools and encourage them to use a journal so they're aware of their own learning because once you realise yourself how far you change it helps you realise people are all at different levels. People coming into the group aren't the same at all. Um, but we also use, we've designed capital indicators which are a bit adapted from the Country Fire Authority. So, you know, has your community at this point socially or culturally and is it low at this point or is it doing really well? And, and that's to show that communities aren't stagnant. You know, with these resources they can move forward or without them um, they often go backwards and become quite isolated. I think it's worth doing. I really think it's um, a good thing to do it, and it's starting from the ground up. I think that's really important in a in a community, to create a strong community, you have to have a strong ground level and, um, and have people working well together. And the study circles are a great way to start that and get people talking about the town and, and looking at it over a number of weeks rather than just coming together and for one night or one day and thinking about it too, which often happens. And uh, so that they're actually discussing things and they keep going back to it and revisiting it. And, uh, and they're also learning the value of working together as a community and, um, and getting some ideas from what other towns are doing too by doing the, um, the study circle. It's a great place to start. Some things are just never as they seem and, and, and it's a bit like a journey. You know, we all see where, where we start and where we finish. We can all take different avenues to get there and sometimes the most quickest or direct avenue isn't always the best avenue because as we go along in a, a bit of a, a detour route, we see things that we wouldn't normally have been exposed to. So I think the course, um, if people take any information, they take, take away with them that 
things aren't always as they seem. In my job as a consultant I can actually bring more of these people type skills and address some of the people issues and the organisation issues uh, better and be more aware of them and, and perhaps uh, at times see the opportunity to address them and even perhaps move across to that, uh, that type of work if I can as well. well um, it skills them to have a public voice and to stand up and, um, and give intelligent responses um, which are taken much more seriously than just heated points of view. So, I, it, you know, it really empowers. I think we need that empowerment because decisions are coming from above which aren't necessarily what communities want and they don't value local knowledge. And um, the, the, the change has to come from grassroots and when you empower people to stand up, they will. Well, I'm not saying that this course is um, totally the answer to everything that's happened because I think there's been a whole lot of other things happening at the same time but it's certainly it's it's brought a lot of things together and it's stimulated a lot of interest and I think it's probably speeded up a process that could have taken a lot longer um, just because I've been forced to get out there and talk to different people and using the methods in the course uh, just brings people together um, at their own value. I think it's a very liberating program. You know, people come into the course who I think sometimes come quite defensively or have known for a long time and within a very short space of time they're saying, well I didn't think this would work but now I'm prepared to try it and um, yeah, so they shift enormously in a very little time. And what they're prepared to take on is quite exciting. This is real learning and they are real challenges and universities are the home of learning and research and community engagement. So for me, regional universities are in a fantastic um, position to be central in that resourcing. Mm. And community level, there's lots of stories, but those stories are better told by local people. Yeah.